Hello and welcome to another video review and uh, I'll be perfectly honest, I wasn't planning on doing a video review for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I actually, this was going to be the first movie I was going to try to dive in and do like a, a short uh, video on, but I ended up walking out of this movie with a, a lot stronger of an opinion than I thought I was going to have. Um, and... I, we're gonna just we're gonna jump right into it. So I have reasons for why I want to make a long form video about this movie. There will be a spoiler section of this review, so I'll tell you right now. I will warn you when I get to it because, well, I do think, given the title of this movie, it's fairly obvious what it's gonna deal with. Um, I don't want I don't want somebody to watch this video and then be upset at me that I spoiled it. So I will warn you when I'm going to spoil this this trailer or this movie. But uh, I'm going to start the review by tiptoeing around the spoilers and just kind of give you my honest takeaways from Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Before I dive in, I probably should have the conversation about how I feel about Indiana Jones because I've never really talked about Indiana Jones on my channel. Um, you know, famously, uh, I did not have a YouTube channel back in 2008 when Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out. You know, that was 15 years ago. And uh, I'll, let's just say, I love the original. I grew up with the original Harrison Ford trilogy. Um, you know, the original three movies are, in my opinion, classics today. I, I know many, many people around the world share that opinion. Uh, everybody has their favorites. Uh, I'm a Raiders guy myself. Uh, that's my favorite Indiana Jones of the three. I also really, really like uh, Last Crusade. Temple of Doom, I do enjoy, but as a kid, that movie scared the fuck out of me. I, uh... I still to this day, I if I rewatch that movie, I skip through the dinner scene because I just think it's fucking disturbing. And uh, the the heart thing, man, that scared the hell out of me as a kid. I saw that. It's weird because like as a kid, I saw other movies that I probably shouldn't have seen at the ages that I saw them. But for whatever reason, Indiana Jones was the one that Temple of Doom specifically is the one that kind of like fucked me up as a kid. You know, and I think that happened with a lot of kids. So, um, obviously, it's one of the reasons why we have the PG-13 rating now. So, that and uh, Poltergeist. But uh, I love that original trilogy. It's one, it's one of my favorite movie trilogies of all time. I was ecstatic in 2008 when, the, you know, we were going to get Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. We're going to get a fourth Indiana Jones movie. We brought the core team back. And I, like... Pretty much everyone, there are some defenders of that movie out there, but pretty much everyone collectively hates that movie. Um, it's bad. <laughs> like, I keep keep aliens and flying saucers out of my Indiana Jones, please. Like, I, I could not get down with that. And most people could not get down with that. Um, but there's just other very dumb things in that movie. Remember Shia LaBeouf swinging from the, the branches with the monkeys? Um, just really bad stuff. I also say like, I have only seen Kingdom of the Crystal Skull one time in the theater opening night at midnight and that's it. I have not ever rewatched that movie. So obviously at that point, you know, for many, many years, I've said like Indiana Jones is a dead franchise. There's no way they're going to fucking revive it. Um, and then we started getting these plans and these rumors, you know, hey, we're thinking about doing a fifth Indiana Jones movie. And I'm just like, no, please don't fucking do a fifth Indiana Jones movie. You already destroyed this franchise. Um, then it was announced that James Mangold, director of Logan, was going to take over. And that was kind of the first sign of maybe a little bit of hope for me was, OK, it's not Spielberg that's going to direct it. Not that he really was the main problem with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. It's very well clear that George Lucas was the main problem with the script for that movie um, because he really wanted to push Indiana Jones in the sci-fi direction and Spielberg was very hesitant on doing that. Um, but this was kind of the first ray of hope for this movie. And the trailers came out, you know, and obviously now in today's day and age, we have the ability to do that de-aging technology. It kind of started 
um, with movies like Rogue One, where they did it to very horrible, you know, results. Uh, with Grand Moff Tarkin, he just looked like a fucking cartoon. Um, they did it to some better results in some of the Marvel movies. That technology has only gotten better as time has gone on, to the point that here in this movie, and it's not really a spoiler because you see it in the trailers, the first like 25 minutes of this movie are a flashback where you have young Indiana Jones. And by young, I mean like how you would remember Indiana Jones from the other movies, but it works and it works ex it, like exceptionally well. They do the right kind of lighting. They do the right things to make it look like you're really looking at something that was filmed 25, 30 years ago, back when these movies were a huge deal. So that looks really, really good. And I was very impressed with that. And the other thing I'll say, maybe it's just because I just came off of seeing The Flash where we had like some of the worst fucking CG I've ever seen in my life. But all the CG in Dial of Destiny is really, really good. Um, there's a, there's like a scene or two, especially with, with uh, you know, de-aged Harrison Ford. Like when he ever gets into a fight or something, you might see his face really quick and it looks bad, but they don't linger on it. And so I, that's why I'd say like 95% of the de-aging stuff is very well done. Every once in a while, you might see like a quick, a quick like punch that he's throwing. And you look at his face, you go, ooh, but... Uh, for the most part, it, it, I just, you know, you go with it, it, it it's good. So, um, <laughs> you know, before I even say any more, I'm going to say I was surprised walking out of this movie how much I actually really liked it. I, I went in so with such tepid expectations, almost to the point that I was dreading going to see this. Uh, my buddy uh, from Podcast 572, Dan, we, we went together He's a massive Indiana Jones fan like myself, and he was the same way. Like we went in with tepid expectations like, well, either it's another Kingdom of the Crystal Skull or maybe they do a good job and we give Indiana Jones a good send off. I feel that they gave him a very good send off um, when it was all said and done. And that's kind of what this movie is about, right? Like it's it's him kind of going on his final adventure um, they don't do, they, they, there's a part of the movie where you think they're going to do what you think they're going to do with this being the last one. Thankfully, they do not do that. Um, I'll talk more about that in the spoiler section, but just know, like, if you go into this movie and you're thinking that, oh, they're going to do the thing that they always do with these kind of movies to make it a definitive ending. Um, they do not do that here. And I'm very, very thankful that they did not do that here because, that could have killed the mood on a movie that up to that point I was really enjoying. So um, I also had this feeling watching it like it's going to be Kingdom of the Crystal Skull again, right? Like even, you know, you can make fun and laugh at the refrigerator thing in that movie because it's fucking stupid. But I will still always maintain as someone who's only seen that movie one time 15 years ago. I enjoyed the first hour of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull until they got to the point where they revealed what that skull actually was, and that's where the movie broke apart for me. I know other people it broke apart for them with the refrigerator scene, but it is what it is. So, um, let's talk about performances. Harrison Ford, I don't think you need to really say much. Like, he gives, he gives it his all. The thing I've learned about Harrison Ford in his older years is he will give you the performance you want when he cares. We saw this in Force Awakens when he came back and played Han Solo. You got the Han, older Han Solo you wanted out of that movie. And I think it's the same here. You get Harrison Ford as old Indiana Jones the way you would want him to be in this movie. So uh, a phenomenal performance. I don't think I need to say much more about Harrison Ford. Um, the girl whose name was it? Phoebe, Phoebe. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, let me look it up here. Cause I'm never going to remember Phoebe Waller bridge. Okay. She's, she's kind of, uh, a pretty big commodity in Hollywood. Now she did that flea bag show that people seem to really like. Um, she's done some other things like she wrote no time to die. The worst fucking James Bond movie of all time. But you know, as an actress, she's pretty good. She is fine here. Um, the thing I liked about her character, and we'll talk more about this in spoilers, but 
The character that you saw her portraying in the trailers is not at all the character you get in this movie. And I thought that was a good twist. And then finally, uh, Mads Mikkelsen uh, is the bad guy here. He plays, uh, as you would guess, a Nazi to a T. He is excellent as always. Uh, it's a, this is an actor who really knows how to play a well-rounded villain. I mean... He was fucking Hannibal Lecter for three seasons of that incredible TV show. Um, I The dude knows how to play a good villain. Well, I think some people might have a problem with his villain in this movie. I thought that it actually was written pretty decently. So um, I enjoyed his performance very much. That being said, uh, you also do get, you get one cameo that I'm not going to spoil until we talk about spoilers, but you get another cameo you've seen in the trailer from uh, Sala which is really, really awesome. And I, I enjoyed seeing him. It's very brief. He's only got like maybe two scenes, but the two scenes he has are really good. So, you know, we've, we've talked about the performances of this movie. Again, it's really hard to talk about this movie with tiptoeing around the uh, events of it and the spoilers. Uh, it's a globetrotting adventure. You know, when we meet Indiana Jones, it's, it's the year 1969. Like you do have that train sequence you've seen in the trailers where he's younger in the beginning and then we meet up with him in 1969 in fact the moon landing has just happened that kind of plays a, a a role in this movie a little bit not that we're going to space or anything like that but um that does play a role in this movie just just a bit here um and it's it's all well done like you you meet his character in the present day uh, the, the story with Phoebe's character, she is the goddaughter of the dude that was with him in the beginning of the movie. They're looking for this, uh, they're actually looking for a completely different object. They're looking for the, this blade that apparently, uh, drew the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, very much an Indiana Jones type relic. They discover that it's a fake. And then when, uh, Indiana Jones friend is captured, Mads Mikkelsen's character, you know, is kind of comes into it and he has the first half of this dial he's looking for. And uh, Indy's friend is able to steal it um, from him. And then they kind of are able to keep it. And it this makes Indy's friend over the years go insane trying to figure out what this device does. Um, so his daughter is Indy's goddaughter and she kind of comes back into it. Um, and I, I really can't go more into that because that leads into spoiler territory, but it leads them on a globe trotting adventure that, yes, they do raid a tomb. Yes, you, you do see the things that you want to see in an Indiana Jones movie here. Um, you know, there is the, 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 all of those like cornerstones that you want out of this type of movie are in this movie. So if that's what you're looking for, um, I think you will really have a good time with it go in knowing that it's not Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. We, we subverted that. Uh, I think the big thing that is going to be the hang up for this movie is what it does in its final like 15, 20 minutes uh, with this device. Um, they do do something. While it does kind of go into the sci-fi territory, um, I felt that it was more fitting for Indiana Jones than aliens, you know, <laughs> kingdom of the crystal skull. So, and I think that's the thing about it is like, as it, as it was revealed, as it was happening, when they finally reveal like, okay, this is what we want to do now that we put this device back together. This is the villains master plan. I was okay with it. There is a, there is a very interesting twist with his master plan. So what I'll say is like Matt Mickelson's character uh, is written away where you think you know what he's wanting to do, but there is one little twist to it that isn't revealed until the right moment. And when it is, it makes that character, in my opinion, more interesting uh, because they could have easily done something uh, different that, you know, you, you would have laughed at or you wouldn't have liked. So I thought that that was kind of interesting. Also, I'll say when they do do what they do at the end of the movie, there are so many ways I feel like they could have fucked this up and it just be another Kingdom of the Crystal Skull type situation. But I think given what they do here, they do the best possible thing they could have done with it. And it works. And it worked for me. So, uh, because there is a moment, like right before they do that, 
where they reveal something and I had that heart sink for a brief moment of, oh no, are they really going to Kingdom of the Crystal Skull this movie? And they don't. In my opinion, they don't. I Again, there are going to be people that watch this and they're probably going to fucking hate where it goes. And that's fine. I, as an Indiana Jones fan, was satisfied at the end of this movie. And I also think it wraps up in a very nice place where you don't have to make another one. I don't want them to make another one. <laughs> but I was happy I got this one, if that makes sense. So I was happy that we could end it and... and say now like hey indy did actually have a good final ride you know we don't have to sit and keep saying well kingdom of the crystal skull is the last one because and, and forget it because now we have something that kind of gives his character a definitive end so um before i get into spoilers i'll just say i enjoyed the shit out of this movie i didn't think i was if you would have asked me a month ago what i thought what, you know at the end of june what movie would i think i would enjoy more flash or Indy, I would have told you Flash. And I'm shocked coming out the other end of this that Indiana Jones is the movie that I enjoyed way more than The Flash. So let's go ahead and talk spoilers and then I'll give this thing a grade. So spoilers, if you don't want to know anything about this movie, go ahead and turn this off now because I'm going to spoil the shit out of it. Um, let's go ahead and dive in. Major, major spoilers. So if you haven't figured out yet that the title of the movie is Dial of Destiny then you know it's very fairly obvious that this movie is going to deal with time travel and it does um but i kind of knew that going in just putting the title i'm like it's going to be time travel right because that's kind of the one thing that we haven't done with indiana jones you know he's he's opened the ark of the covenant you know he drank the blood of kali in, in temple of doom he's you know resurrected he, he got the holy grail they found that in last crusade and then, uh, you know, he's seen aliens in, in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So it's like, what's left to do with this character? Time travel is kind of the one thing that they haven't done. And so going into it, I kind of figured that. And you, you get those bits and pieces through the movie when they start kind of talking about what this dial can do. But it's done in a way that I don't think it's terrible. Like, it's not like okay, we put this thing together because it's like a dial you put together. There's two pieces. It's broken half. You put it together. There's a, uh, I can't remember the word that they use, but there's a thing to decode it. And then the way it works is there are fissures in time that open up wormholes that they can use with this dial to kind of guide them through the wormhole. So it's not just like, oh, this guy dialed this thing back and then just went back to whatever the fuck he wanted. No, they can only go back in specific parts of time. Um, where Mads Mikkelsen's character thinks he can go back to August 20th, 1939, and uh, which is, I believe, if I remember correctly, the invasion of Poland, kind of the start of, of Hitler's rise. And... You know, it, and the twist there, and I think what's interesting is when he gets the dial uh, and they kind of bring Indy along with him, they get in this plane, there's like this really bad storm that's going to happen and they're going to fly through the eye of the storm because that's the wormhole, right? Um, and again, you know, at this point in the movie, you either have to go with it or you're out. I, I went with it because I was like, this isn't that bad to me. Um, and he makes a comment to Mads Mikkelsen, you know, he's like, what? So who, who is it you're going to kill? Churchill, Ike, like who, who is it that's going to die so that you're, you know, the Nazis win? And he just looks at me and says, Hitler. Because Hitler made all these mistakes, I'm going to kill him and basically become Hitler and rectify all the mistakes that he made. So he assures that the Nazis win. And I thought that was a really interesting twist because I didn't expect that at all. You know, I expected the the you know, typical, like, well, I'm going to go kill Churchill and that's going to affect the war and stuff. No, the fact that he's like, no, I'm going to kill Hitler and just take over uh, was was a refreshing, I, I think, a refreshing take on this kind of trope. We've seen, you know, in like Wolfenstein games and stuff where they've kind of played around with alternate history. Um, and I thought this was just it, well done and added just a little bit of an extra layer to uh, Mickelson's bad guy here, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce his German name because it's absurd. Um, but 
Yeah, like it's it's well done. And they do go through this wormhole. Uh, but the thing as they're kind of going through it, Indy realizes like, oh, you didn't compensate for such and such. I don't remember what he said, the technical term, but he's just like, so you're off. And then kind of laugh at him. He's like, no, you're off. You're not going to, you know, August 20th, 1939. I, you know, I don't know where you're going, but it ain't there. And so this was the other moment where in the movie, I'm like, oh, man, are they, what are they going to do? Are they going to see dinosaurs? Are they going to see something really fucking stupid? Um, no, they go back to Roman times uh, and basically meet up with the dude that made this dial. Because beforehand, and I'll jump back a little bit, um, when they find the tomb that has the other half of the dial, they realize on the skeleton's arm of the guy, he's got a watch. And they're like, huh? How does he have a watch? He has one other thing that's modern as well. And then when they look at his kind of sarcophagus thing, it doesn't look like a phoenix, like a bird. It looks like a plane with uh, with propellers. And they're like, that doesn't make that doesn't make any sense. So when they go back in time, uh, you know, and after a series of ridiculous, you know, it's a ridiculous sequence that I, I honestly even here I don't want to spoil it because I enjoyed it that much. It was like the right level of stupid that I enjoyed. But eventually the plane that they're in does kind of crash. There is a second plane that goes through. I'm not even going to get into um, that. They are able to escape, but they end up meeting up with this guy and Indiana Jones finally realizes like the whole point isn't that this guy traveled forward. The point is that he made this device so that Indiana Jones could come back in time. And that's how the guy gets the watch and stuff. So it proves that his dial works. It just didn't work for that guy at that time because he didn't have the right tools to get through the wormhole, so, so to speak. So um, and then you have this this kind of sad sequence where I thought they were going to do this and thank God they didn't. But, you know, you get the sequence where Indy's like, no, I'm going to stay here. I want to stay here. And his goddaughter's kind of like, no, no, you're, you you cannot stay here. You will, you will alter history. No, I want to stay here. No, you're not. You know, and she finally ends up like punching him. And then he wakes up back in his time, you know, so uh, and realizes like, yeah, I, I shouldn't be there. And then uh, at the very end, they bring in Miriam, uh, Karen Allen, uh, and they kind of reconcile because the beginning of this movie, you learn they're no longer married. Uh, there is a reason why that's explained in the middle of the movie, which I thought was kind of humorous. So you probably wonder going to this movie, like, is Shia LaBeouf going to have a cameo because he's technically Indy's son? No, what they do is at one point, uh, the goddaughter asks Indy, like, if you could control this thing, go back in time, what would you do? And he basically says, I'd go back in time and stop my son from enlisting and going to the Vietnam War. Because basically his son enlisted, went off to Vietnam and was killed. And that death brought so much grief that they got divorced. So it was a good way to write that character out because like you're never going to bring back Shia LaBeouf. OK, uh, there's just there's no way that was going to happen. So um, the other thing I'll say that, you know, I, it gets into spoiler ter spoiler territory here is that I fully expected uh, Phoebe Waller's character to be a specific way, given how the trailers are. It's not she's not looking at the beginning of this movie. She's not looking to get the dial to finish what her dad started. It does become that. But in the beginning, she's just a thief. She wants to sell it because she owes a lot of money to various people for nefarious things she did. I thought that was an interesting twist because I did not expect that out of that character at all. Um, and that's not like how that character is portrayed in any trailer you've seen for this movie. So that was refreshing as well. They kind of, they did a lot to hide things in the trailers for this movie and didn't really spoil it. So, um, negatives. If I have one negative on this movie and I, I, I'll say this, we want like the movie ended. There's no end credit scene. I turned and looked at Dan and I'm just like, it was good. Right. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, I'd, I'd almost argue it was kind of great. Yeah. And uh, we just both like left the theater, not really discussing it because we were both kind of in awe that they actually made a good Indiana Jones movie. They didn't fuck this up like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And I've had a day now to think about it because I, you know, even 
even on my car ride home, I'm sitting here thinking about this movie. I'm like, what was the negative? Like, there has to be something. And I've come up with one thing that I think is kind of a negative in this movie. They don't play the Indiana Jones, dun, 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 you know, theme very much. In fact, I only remember it, hearing it once or twice in the entire movie. And that's kind of a bummer. So... Otherwise, I think the performances are great. I don't think I didn't really have any flaws or, you know, with the story or anything like that. Sure. Can you pick apart time travel? Can you pick apart the device and what it does in it? Absolutely. You can do that with any fucking movie that comes out. But I think especially for Indiana Jones fans that are so, you know, just just destroyed over Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and looking at this kind of like I was going in thinking, oh, fuck, they're going to destroy Indiana Jones a second time. They don't. They made a good fucking Indiana Jones movie. They gave that character a real decent ass closure. And I honestly, I had a blast of this movie. Um, I tell my my girlfriend is currently uh, on on a camping trip and I text her because she's like, well, have fun with it. And I told her like earlier in the week, I was like, if it's good, I'll take you to see it next week. If it's bad, you dodged a bullet. And I texted her when it got out. I said, it's really good. I'll take you next week. So I'm going to go see it again. I, I really enjoyed it. It might be my favorite movie of this summer period. And it is my second favorite movie I've seen this year now behind Evil Dead Rise. That's my favorite movie I saw all year. So, um, what am I going to give this movie? What am I giving it? I'm giving it an A minus. I really had a great time with this movie. I think it was a blast from beginning to end. I highly encourage anybody out there that's an Indiana Jones fan to go see it. I don't understand the hate for this movie. That's a lot. This is the last thing I'm going to say is, you know, IGN, IGN put out a review really fucking early, like a month ago that gave this movie a four out of 10 and said basically they thought it was worse than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And a lot of it had to do with the, this specific person reviewing this movie. And I don't remember the person's name because it wasn't one of the like regular IGN people I'm familiar with, but their big criticism was in the de-aging technology and how they don't agree with that. It's like, you know, if you don't agree with that, that's fine. But like it was done perfectly fine here in this movie. Like it, it I don't think we should be if the actor is OK with it and they're alive. I don't think it should be. a. I, I really don't think it should be a problem. Now, if let's say 50 years from now, we make a new Indiana Jones movie and we use like a, a stunt double and do this de-aging face technology on Harrison Ford when he's not alive, that's a different story. So but if the actor is alive and they don't give a shit, who cares? That's my opinion on it. So. I really enjoyed it. I think it's worth your time. A minus. I'd love to know in the comments below. Do you like, did you like this movie? Did you hate it? Um, let me know and I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. <laughs>